Hi everybody, this is Bob with another Logic Pro 10 tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at signal routing inside of Logic. So more specifically, we're going to take a look at sends, or better known as aux sends, buses, and auxiliary tracks or auxiliary channel strips. So why am I sitting here at my guitar? Well, I thought for some of you folks that are new to Logic, it might help you understand a really simple concept by looking at, at it in a simple way. So Logic does complicate a few things in this regard. So let's look at it this way. This guitar is my instrument track and this volume control on my guitar is the send knob. It's how much signal do I want coming out of this guitar and going out. So I'm going to turn it all the way up. I want it full volume. So let's take a listen. Well, I'm not hearing anything out of the amp. So I need a bus or some way to get this signal out of here to its destination, right? So I need a guitar cable or an audio cable. I need to plug it in here. And this cable is my bus. So a bus is nothing more than electrical pathway to get this signal to its destination. So I plugged it in and I still have nothing because guess what? The other end of the cable doesn't have a destination. So I've bussed this signal out full blast and it's coming out this bus, but this bus has no destination. Now my destination is my aux track when we get into logic but you know in my scenario it's my guitar amp or you know one of these modules over here so i'm going to plug this into my amp right and there we go now we have signal coming out of the guitar through the send through the bus and the bus is carrying it to its destination which is the aux track this is a very simple concept right now let's go take a look at logic and I want to show you how this gets confusing. So this gets a little confusing inside Logic. That probably explains why I keep getting questions regarding the difference between a send, a bus, and an aux track. Now I think some of the automatic features within Logic that's designed to really make things easier for you has created some confusion. So I'll explain as we go. So this is a very typical setup for me. I have a uh, acoustic guitar track left and right, have a bass track, piano, vocals, left and right overhead, kick, snare, rack tom, and floor tom. So a very typical thing for me to do is to use a send. So let's see, I'll go up here to this acoustic guitar, come down here to the send, and put it on bus one. So I just split this signal now. So I'm still going to the stereo out, but I'm also taking some of this signal based on how much I'm going to get from this volume control here. And by the way, if you wanted that at Unity Gain, you would hold the Option key and just click, and it goes right to, uh, right to zero. And you could do the same thing on any of these, um, these faders, just Option, click, and it goes right to zero. So I'm taking this um, audio now with this send and splitting it off and sending some of it out through this cable called Bus 1. And you would do this if you wanted to use the same effect on multiple tracks and therefore saving processing power. Now let's take a look at the mixer. We'll pull open this mixer window and you'll see what has happened now is that I have created one aux, uh, aux channel strip here labeled aux1 because I created one bus. So what happened is this is my volume control from my guitar, right? Bus one is the cable that went out of this track here, and now it comes over here, and it's plugged in this aux channel strip. And Logic has done this for you automatically. Just by creating bus one, it created aux one. That typically does not happen in any other DAW. So you have some things here going on automatically, um, that's great, and you really want that to happen because when you create this send, you have to have some place for it to go. So it eliminates the step of adding the aux. It also creates some problems, as you'll see. So um, my aux one 
track here, I need, I'm going to put a reverb on there. So I'm going to select the space designer and I'm going to look for a room and we'll just make it this nice room here. And so now I have a room reverb that's on this uh, aux one channel. And now my right guitar, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Well, aux one's already connected to bus one, so I just selected it so it doesn't need to create another one. So now I'm sending through this volume control here, some of the signal again to aux one, which is going to be the reverb. Let me just show you one other thing on reverb. What I do is um, turn the wet signal all the way up and the dry signal all the way down. You already have plenty of dry signal over here. What you need over here is all reverb. Now bass, I'm not going to use any reverb. Piano, uh, I'm going to use the same room reverb for piano. So again, I'm selecting uh, bus number one. Vocals, I'm going to use something different. So I'm going to put that on bus two. Notice down here now, aux two was created. So I need to put a reverb on that. Space Designer, and for that we're going to do a plate, we'll do this vocal plate. Turn the volume all the way up on the reverb and the dry signals all the way down. Now my left and right overheads on my drum can be the room, do the room again, and my snare I'm going to put on a different reverb, so I'm going to go to bus 3. Notice aux 3 is created. Again, another reverb. I'm going to select this drum plate for my snare. So the only other thing I need to add, uh, let's see, on my vocal, I want to add a parallel uh, compression track. And I normally do that on bus 10. I just got in the habit of doing that. And here's the problem that Logic's going to create for you. So one thing you'll notice, we have bus 1 is on aux 1, bus 2 is on aux 2, bus 3 is on aux 3, bus 10 is on aux 4. So you can see now when I go to add... Um, you know, another bus. You can see this can get kind of confusing here because these are labeled aux 1, 2, and 3. They match the bus. Then I come down here, aux 4 uh, gets its signal from bus 10. So you can make a mess of this pretty quick. So one way to alleviate that is this nomenclature down here. Make sure you change it to something that's meaningful to you. Like this is a room reverb, so I'm going to label it room. Okay, this one here was my vocal reverb. This one was my snare reverb. And aux 4 is my parallel compression. So now if I'm going to add a bus, look what happens. I have bus 1 is room, 2 is vocal. So I've renamed those aux that they're tied to, and it makes this really easy to see now. Bus 10 is parallel compression, and this is fantastic. So it kind of solved my problem by doing that. So really, this is just about organization. Make sure that you name your aux tracks so it's meaningful to you when you go back and look at it. I'm going to close this uh, mixer down here, and I want to show you a couple other things here. Well, I'm going to add a software instrument track here. And you see this open library um, is ticked here. I normally don't use this, but I want to show you some, uh, some things that go on there when you choose from this library. So I'm going to create it, um, a new instrument track here, and I want to use a synthesizer for my lead part in this song, so I'm just going to grab something here. Okay, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to close this now. And I want you to notice what happened on this um, this synth track here. It selected ES2, the synthesizer. That's great. and But it put an EQ. It put, uh, I don't even know what that is. That's a directional mixer on there. It put an overdrive plug-in. It put a delay plug-in on there. Um, we have created bus 4 now. So we have bus 4 and bus 5. And so you can see that if you start selecting a bunch of instruments here, and every time you do that, it's creating a couple of uh, buses and bussing out to a couple of aux tracks, and it's doing this automatically, 
we go back to this mixer, you can see that this, these are the two aux tracks we just added by adding that one instrument. And it's added Space Designer on uh, both of them. It looks like it's added a chorus plug-in um, that's actually turned off. It's added an EQ plug-in. Um, not, it's not really doing anything. But I guess my point is, if you're a beginner and it's adding all this stuff and you're not knowing what it's doing, it's, it's hard to learn from that if you don't pay attention. So if you're going to use the library and you're going to add these software instruments, or for that matter, if you go up there and select um, uh, audio tracks like a vocal track, it'll add some, uh, some effects for your vocal chain for you. So you can actually learn from it. But if you start creating all this stuff and if you're not paying attention, then you go back later when you're trying to mix, you can have a big mess going on here when you start adding a bunch of tracks. So I guess my point here is just pay attention to what it's doing for you. Let me just show you one other thing with the drummer track. Let me create a new drummer. Let's take a listen here. Okay, great. We have a drummer track. Since I don't have a lot of flexibility with this drummer track as far as um, creating stuff here, right? This just never worked very well for me. I like the drummer, but it just never works very well for editing. So what I do when I use it is create another software instrument track. And what I do is I create the same drum kit on this track that's on the drummer track. So I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to go to Instrument, Drum Kit Designer, and I'm going to go Stereo. And I'm going to go down here and select the SoCal Kit, close it, because that's the same SoCal Kit as what's, what's uh, selected here. So I'm going to take this and just pull it down, and now what I have is I can go into the Piano Roll, and now... I can say, okay, there's my snare. I don't like that. I'm going to move it to that. So you see I have a lot of flexibility. I'm going to select them all and then try that. So you get my point here. I can go into individual notes, change the crashes. I can go through here and edit this loop and make it exactly what I need for my song. Now, there's one problem with that. If I go over here to this uh, track now, I want to send a um, um, send out to a reverb. That reverb is going to affect the entire track. I don't want to do that. I mean, it, it it reverb usually sounds bad on a kick drum, especially. But if I just wanted to put reverb on a snare, so Logic has created a very easy way to do that in multi-output. So I'm just going to reselect this now as the drum kit designer, but now I'm going to select multi-output. Now, there's one thing that has changed if I go over to, and I can only see this, by the way, in the mixer view. So when I look at the SoCal kit now, right here, since I selected it as a multi-output, there's a little plus symbol right here, okay? And what this allows me to do is to take those drum hits and put them on different aux channels and logic does this automatically so i'm just going to hit plus and it added the kick i'm going to hit plus now it added the snare i'm going to hit plus it added the tom so you see what it's doing here so now what i have if i solo this up um watch what happens i just have the kick now So now that I have an aux track that only has the kick and the snare and the toms and the hi-hats, I can go through here on this snare and just, there's my snare reverb. I can just put this snare on this reverb all by its lonesome. So it's a very cool way to isolate your drum hits without uh, doing a lot of work and editing up in this region. So there you go, folks. We took a look at some very basic 
um, rooting inside logic. The main thing here is just keep this simple as possible and know what's going on in your mixes. So I hope that helped you out. Please comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.